Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Moda Super Series. We are live on Sporty Stuff TV and it's finals night here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. <laughs> and now would you please welcome to the stage our players for match number one of the evening. Firstly, it's the gambler, Graham Usher. And it's Ebbs, Lee Evans. the night that they've all been dreaming of over the last 12 and a half weeks these players have thought wouldn't it be nice to be here on the final night of stage one they are here and they now have a chance to get 20,000 pounds in their back pocket for the very first time with no exception every single player tonight is playing for the biggest paycheck of their career and it could be a paycheck that changes their life. Not just in darts either. This is Lee Evans. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First but leg, it will be Graham Usher to, to get first. us going here Game in on. group number one. Three players in group one. You've got Usher, Daryl Pilgrim, and Lee Evans. In group two, 100. you've got Conan Whitehead, Josh Payne, and Chris Mason. We will focus on group one to start. Two players. We'll go head to head here and then we will have another 57. game per player after that. I'm Paul the Asset Nicholson and I'm joined by Corinne Hammond tonight. A very big warm welcome to you, Corinne. Ah, oh, thank you, Paul. It's lovely to be here. It already looks a little bit different. The last two nights that I've been here, there's not been any crowd in. So it's it's a bit weird looking at the graphics here and seeing people sitting in the background. But what an amazing experience for these players 56. to be able to get up there and play in front of this crowd tonight. Definitely. I'm sure there will be a, a few first 100. game nerves. And we haven't seen Graham Usher play since Wednesday afternoon, of course, because he won Group A by playing the first three days of the week. He was mightily 100. impressive. Graham, you if not a little bit fortunate to win the first group of the week. But he's starting very, very well. He's got 84 left. And leaves himself on a tidy two dart after 12. It certainly doesn't seem at this point that the two days rest has done him any damage. Well, there is that curse that we keep talking about. People who 84. win Group A Graham but don't have success 64. on Saturday a couple of days later. Graham is the kind of player who doesn't care about that. 32. And he will come back for that 32 bed. No matter what Lee Evans does here. He is quite a deliberate player as Lee Evans. He likes to take his time if he's not comfortable. One hundred and twenty five. That's good pressure. Graham, you require thirty two. What can Usher do? Game shot. That's on the what first he can leg. do. It's a Graham seventeen Usher. dart start to get us underway. And do you feel that there is pressure on Graham Usher tonight because He's supposedly one of the favourites by winning Group A, of course. He doesn't strike me as the kind of player is, um, that will feel that kind of pressure. He seems very relaxed and, and very comfortable in the fact that he hasn't played the last two days. So, yeah, I, I think that he'll, he'll do OK. We're just going to have a little break in proceedings. I think we just need to make a slight adjustment to one of our cameras. So I'm just going to get your perspective, Corinne, about who you think is the favourite tonight because the bookmakers make Josh Payne the favourite, and miraculously, he's the favourite going into tonight's finals, even though he didn't win one of the weeks to qualify. Yeah, that is a little surprising, actually, but obviously his performance over the, over the days that he's played has warranted that favourite place. Personally, I can't really see past Conan. Conan was amazing last night, almost unplayable at times. 
dropped off towards the end, but I know that he's got that real passion for it. He's got that real win, will to win. So for me, he's my favourite. Strangely, fourth favourite tonight, Conan Whitehead. Maybe a sign of the tricky group he's in. Chris Mason, the outsider. Mm -hmm. What kind of fairy tale would it be if he was to go all the way tonight? Wouldn't it just be a fairy tale? But, you know, as Mace does, he just flies under the radar. He keeps saying he's not really a dart player. He's a commentator. And I think that served him well, actually. And maybe that's actually a tactic from him. Do you get the feeling as well that all of the players in Group 2 are under a lot more pressure because of what they've done in the past or how they've played this week? Maybe all of the players in Group 1, two of them we're seeing in the first match, or maybe going under the radar a little bit? It definitely does seem to be. There doesn't seem to be as much talk about the players in Group 1 as what there is in Group 2. So that could relieve a, bit, a little bit of pressure from them as well, and they can just get up there and relax and play. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in Group 2, actually. But I just wonder if uh, Chris Mason's thinking, you know what, this could revive something. There's been a lot of talk this week about whether... Him winning tonight would spark him going to a qualifying school campaign, but I think we know better than that. But as far as Group 1's concerned, when it comes to Usher, Pilgrim, and, of course, Lee Evans in that group, if they were to win tonight or maybe even get to the final with £10,000 for the runner-up, what would that do for their careers going forward financially? I think it would really allow them the freedom to go and chase what they want to do playing darts. I, I would expect that they probably will go to Q school, Although I was saying earlier that uh, there might be some players who think Q School's not right for me right now. If I've got the opportunity to continue playing in this, in the Motor Super Series, um, because obviously you can't play if you've got a tour card, they might choose to do that for another year or so, see how they go, really prep themselves to make a, a good hard dent at Q School the following year. You have actually played in this tournament when it was called the Live League. How is your reaction uh, gauged what this venue is like compared to the previous Second one? As we are about to get first. back Game underway, on. but I'm going to give you that question anyway. How does this compare to our previous venue in Southampton? There is no comparison at all. This is, you know, this is an amazing venue to play in here and, you know, no squeaky floorboard. It's amazing how many times we talk about that squeaky floorboard. 100. But nothing squeaky about that first leg for Graham Usher, who... Over the course of 15 games, 140. on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, it won 10 of them for 20 points. He was one of three players on 20 points at the end of that Group A campaign. But even though they couldn't be separated on points, they could be separated on leg difference. And it was Graham who was the master of that. 60. And in fact, over those 15 games, he averaged more than anybody else as well. 92.17. For 15 games, that's an excellent standard. Yeah, that, that is an excellent standard. To be able to maintain 41. that over 15 games is just shows the quality of player that he really is. Well, interestingly enough, when it comes to Lee Evans, who 28. finished bottom of Group A after Wednesday's play, he was able to turn things around and get second spot in Group C. Lee is the only player coming into tonight's finals who is averaging under the actual average for the whole stage, which... Coincidentally, is exactly 86. 70. For the week, Evans is at 82.85. So he's the only person under par in a bad sense. 100. Coming into Saturday Lee night. Lee required 150. You think we're going to get the Simon Whitlock here of the three bulls? <laughs> that would have been, uh, yeah, good, but obviously not. 100. I suppose we have to mention the fact that you've got two Australian representatives in the commentary box tonight. But 60. we've got six English Lee players tonight. Lee require 50. There's a lot of hand rubbing going on up there, isn't it? Is that nerves or is it just trying to get a bit of traction on the fingers? That single 18 is only just found. 42. And there's a bit of a Graham whisper from Ebbs there. After he misses two shots at double. Can this be pinched? Just going back to the hand rubbing there, Paul, it could also be the fact that it's probably a lot warmer 53. up there tonight than what it has been Lee during the week with eight. all the lights on, the crowd there, whereas during the week, not as many lights, not as bright, not the same kind of heat. Excellent point. So a very different Six. proposition 
for these two players. Graham, you require And Evans 60. continues to miss doubles. Usher might not. Game shot and he the second leg. Takes Graham a Usher. huge advantage in this match now. And we can't ignore the fact that when you play on Saturday night, it's ruthless. Third leg, it's Two Graham games per player first. in each group. Game on. And leg difference. If you get a big win, you could be through just playing one match. Yeah, absolutely. And 99. we have seen a couple of nine dart shootouts in the in the last few weeks when it's come to finals night as well. So, yeah, anything is possible. If we ought to get a third nine dart shootout, one hundred. The most likely scenario is that all three players get the same result: one win, one loss, sixty, and three games of the same score. To say that we never had one. In all of the time that we were in Southampton, we come to Portsmouth, we've had two. Who's to say we won't get a third? 96. The first night that it happened, everyone was, uh, the players themselves were going, what, what's going on here? What happens? What, what do we do? What, what goes on now? It was fabulous, actually. I had to go into the practice room and tell the players what to do. Lee Shew and Ryan Finesse and Andy Hamilton we're getting ready to do the bullseye shootout to see who went first. And Conan Whitehead, who's here tonight, he was sitting down on a chair here by saying, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I just want to watch this. Graham Usher is doing more than watch right now. He's averaging a steady 85. And Evans is playing a bit more like he did in the first three days of the week. One hundred and eighty! Well, that's the first maximum of Saturday night. And it gives Evans a chance to get back in the game. 44. Lee requires 67. Most players go travel 17 here, but not the only option. You could go travel 9 here, Corinne. He's going to try double 16 again. And he's going to take his time. 35. Graham, you require 58. But not close enough. He's really having some trouble with these doubles so far tonight. 48. He's been afforded another no opportunity Lee to come back and correct 32. it. Let's see if he can hit it. Are we seeing finals night nerves? I think we are. It's understandable, really, when you think about, you know, what they're actually playing for and then all the hype that's Game surrounded it all the as well. Line. So it, it is quite understandable that there would be some nerves. I concur. And I was doing a little bit of digging because I like to fall down the statistical leg, rabbit hole. To throw first. It's a very matrix-style place with lots of letters and numbers. But the one thing that grabbed my attention more than any other thing was the biggest payday for all of these players in their careers was Josh Payne making the second round of the World Championship on three occasions. So he's banked £15,000 on three separate occasions... But no player has ever made £20,000 from one single tournament night like this. Not even Chris Mason. 60. Wow. It's amazing. It just goes to show what kind of opportunity is being offered here. And these aren't even professional Nine. players. But they want to be. Yeah. And this is a really good stepping stone for them to be able to become those professional players. They have had a taste in the last couple of seasons. Both of these guys, in fact, have played in 36. PDC Pro Tour action with Evans getting a fair bit of success this season as an alternate player. 59. You may wonder why these semi-pros do get an opportunity without a tour card. Well, when the numbers are shy because some pros decide to take a break, they have to get them from somewhere and they get them from the Challenge Tour Order of Merit. And some of these guys are pretty high up on that order of merit this year. In fact, Scott Williams, who was scheduled to play in 60. Champions Week this week, chose not to play because he was on the Pro Tour this week. And his replacement, Josh Payne. Mm. Yeah, Josh is clearly counting 100. his lucky stars tonight. Well, this is Group 1, of course. 100. Lee, you require and I think we are seeing a bit of nerves in the gambler. A bit of a tentative nature. He's definitely slowed down 
since the end of leg two. Evans with 75 left. Had to go for the 25 and bull, really, with Usher on 133. Now, on this number, there is... 38. A score Graham, of thought that going treble 19 is better than treble 20. Because if you get the treble 19, you have a double-double out. Whereas with 73, after 86. treble 20, you don't get that luxury. Lee require 40. Tops for 2-2. Two, two. Game shot on the fourth Found. leg. Lee and that is a 20-dart leg. And the averages in this game are almost identical. As you can see, Big only point one, one one first. between them. Only the one maximum found Game on. so far, which is a bit of a surprise. But I just wonder as well, Corinne, whether the pace of this game doesn't suit Graham Usher because he likes to get on with it. He likes to swiftly deliver, whereas Evans is a bit more deliberate. Yeah, you could be right. Some players do get put off by that, and it usually is the quick players. But you find a lot of the time that the quick players seem to pull the slower 60. player into their speed. You'll find a, a lot of slower players start playing a lot quicker than what they normally would. But obviously, Lee Evans is having none 97. of that. He's taking things at his own pace. They have played each other three times this week already because they were both involved in Group A. Evans took the first battle by four legs to three. But maybe to prove the point that we've just made, after getting used to the pace, Usher then took the next two games by a margin, by four legs to one and four legs to nil. And his averages were better on Tuesday and Wednesday than they were against him on Monday. Leg five seems to be going a little bit better, but they're on a finish. The both of them after nine. This is more like it. One hundred and two. That was almost a big oh, outside there. One hundred and sixty-seven. Well, he's responsible for the biggest out of the week. He had the big fish one seventy earlier on in the week. Yes, we were also treated to a one seventy last night from young Kieran Tehan. That made my 40. day. Felt like it was Christmas. Graham, you require 25. <laughs> it's not Christmas yet. No. We've got a lot of darts to deliver before Game shot the fifth comes. Play. But Graham it might be Usher. Christmas for somebody tonight. 3-2 Usher. He takes the advantage once again. And you may be wondering, Sixth leg, it's why to does Graham first. Usher have the darts in this contest? It's by virtue of the fact that he won Group A. It doesn't just get you to Saturday night. It does have some fringe benefits as well. First game that we will have from Group 2 will 100. be Conan Whitehead against Chris Mason. They've played each other a couple of times over the last 85. two nights. That will be a really interesting lineup because Mace has openly said himself his first game is not his best game. He knows that, he thinks about it. He, you know, so whether he's after the last couple of days has, has tried to put that out of his mind, well, time will tell. Whereas Conan is completely the opposite. He comes out like an absolute 59. bull at the game. Just seeing a bit of perspiration on the brow of the gambler. Just illustrating the point that Corinne made about the temperature in here, because if you add 60 or 70 bodies into this room, the temperature 41. is going to go up about 3 or 4 degrees minimum. There's a lot of expectant fans here tonight a sold out modus live lounge 60 you also have to wonder whether now playing an evening session for graham has an effect on him i mean he played monday to wednesday there were morning sessions he's had a couple of days off and now he's coming in and playing in the evening so that's different to what he's done all 99. week 99 he's one of only two players tonight who have won on a saturday night with us in this venue and the previous one. The only other person to do that is Conan Whitehead, who is the sheriff of Group 2, the first name on the sheet. So he has won here before. 58. But there weren't this Brandy many people here. 157. For the match. He thought he was going to get a shot at tops there. That's why he stuttered on dart three. 97. But now Lee Evans needs Lee this 1-5-2 to stay in the match because he's already seen 
Graham Usher hit a 60 check out in this first match of Saturday night. That is perfect. He gave it every chance. But match starts are incoming for Graham the gambler. Requires 60. First chance to roll the dice. 21. He went for the right hand corner. Mm, he was obviously trying to miss that second Lee dart that he thrown 52. right above the, the wire there. The line wasn't right. Is he going to rue those misses? Evans perspiring now. Double 16. Could be his last chance to save the match. 20. Boys, he had some trouble down there. Graham, you require 39. Double 16. Game and shot. double eight. And the, the first two Graham points Usher. of the night for Graham Usher, who is now in command of Group 1. Lee Evans is going to need to win his next match against Daryl Pilgrim, which will be in match three. His destiny is in his hands, but he's going to need a big win against Pilgrim. He stands a chance. He'll need to average more than 79, that's for sure. Usher winning with 33% on the doubles by the skin of his teeth, really, because it should have gone the distance. We'll go to group two after the break, which will be Conan Whitehead and Chris Mason to start things off after this short commercial.